continuing with our second half of the investment, you want to make sure that you apply separator once more. And again, just a thin, generous film of separator. Avoid applying separator within the wax up. And it, this works very well when you have a, a very soft bristle brush like I do here. And moving on to the other side, I'll just bring this one over to get a better look with the camera. Get it as close as you can to the wax up. Now the second half of the investment, some videos uh, you might see it uh, using the half and half stone and plaster mix. I like to do, uh, I do it a little bit different and just use regular stone or, uh, to, to invest the teeth initially let that set not completely but go through its initial set for about five six minutes and uh, then uh, top it up so i'll show you how to do that and just to make it a little more convenient for the video i have some slurry water here that i'm going to use that uh, will uh, allow the the mix to set much faster so we can catch up with the video so i don't break it up in two parts so I have my regular bowl here, so I'm just gonna use regular stone, not much, just enough to cover the teeth and the wax up. I'm gonna use some slurry water here. And you wanna mix it somewhat on the thick side, not too runny. Now in your own labs and clinics, you can use regular water, because this will set very fast. stone over the teeth, especially inside the margins, as well as the remaining wax pattern. And I'll do the same thing on the lower. Try not to get it too high if you're coming real close to the top surface of the flask. So this will produce a better detail of the wax up as long and, uh, and as well as make it easier to separate the case because as we all know, regular stone is a lot less porous than plaster and therefore your separator will work much better against the stone. So that's good there. Doesn't have to be pretty. I'm just gonna clean off my bowl and by the time I clean off my bowl and mix the next half, that plaster, or stone I should say, that's setting right now, because I use the slurry solution, it should be just perfect. And you can, you'll see in the video, this will eventually lose the gloss finish that it has you can see it already going matte and just upon pressure that it's starting to stiffen up so this would this is actually ideal so by the time I do my next mix and vibrate it and top it up it should be just perfect now we sh should use some kind of stress uh, point here where we can put a little bit of paper to 
create a little stress point to break off most of the plaster. But as you can see on this one, we're almost right to the top. So we don't need it here, but we can do it here possibly. So I'm going to go with half and half mix. And you can certainly do this both at the same time. I wasn't counting. I hope somebody was counting. But over time, you just kind of know. So I'm just going to use regular water now. In this one, you can mix it a little bit thinner. And I just need to add a little more water, so I'm not gonna go under the, the faucet. I'm just gonna wet my spatula, and that's all it, it takes sometimes. Just a little bit of wetness on the spatula. That's all you need. some mix in here. Now some people when they pour they use the bench top to vibrate into position. I don't like using that technique. I like using the vibrator and firmly hold the upper half of the flask against the lower. I'm holding it firmly against the lower to prevent excessive plaster coming through here or stone plaster mix coming through here. This one here, I'll do the same thing. Just enough stone to cover the model or where the teeth are. This one, because I was borderline to the top, I went all the way to the top. So the bottom half, including the model, will act as a stress breaker when we deflast this later. So I can just simply top this up, just using you, showing you two different types of variations in terms of investment. This one now to prevent any excess stone seeping through the two halves of the flask. And it's very important that we have a very clear finish here. We don't wanna have a lot of stone in between because it creates a nice visual when we start um, packing it with acrylic. It gives you an idea whether you're back together or not. So I'm gonna let the stone set a little bit and take a little bit of paper Before I top it off, and I'm going to put just a little piece of paper. It doesn't have to be exactly. You can buy preformed papers to put inside the flask. You don't need to. I just use some regular paper towel. Just enough to create a bit of a stress point. So when we def this flask this later, it breaks up very easily. this off so there isn't a lot of work to do. I'm going to leave this top portion, let that set. And then by leaving this to set a little bit, like I did with a regular stone mix, it holds the two flasks together. So when I do top it off and close the lid, like I did with this one, all that pressure that I'm putting it won't promote the plaster from coming through between the two halves of the flask, which is very important, again, to have that clean, seamless look for a nice visual in terms of having the flasks back together when we start packing acrylic inside the hydraulic press. 
So I'm not gonna wait for this plaster to set. Uh, I'm just gonna move ahead with the video. But keep in mind, I'm gonna use a half and half plaster mix to top this off and I'll close the lid like I did here. And I have no risk of pushing the plaster between here.